more good morning it's another blessed and wondrous monday and we are grateful that you all are here with us in the fellow to fellowship in god this morning we pray that this day is not just going to be another monday for you but it's going to be a new beginning for each and every one of us let us start with a short word of prayer Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for this blessed morning. We thank you for this new day and the opportunity for us to encounter this word this morning. We pray, O oh Father, that by your light, by your word, that you minister in us a new thing, O oh Lord, that we will have something, O oh Lord, to walk with for the rest of this year, O oh Father, to walk in dominion of who you are to us and our families. Blessed be your holy name, O Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel. Your name be praised, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, 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 your name be praised. Our God is good, oh, Emmanuel, oh, Emmanuel, 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 your name be praised, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, you are Emmanuel, 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 your name be praised, when I think upon your goodness. And your faithfulness in each time. I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy to receive the kind of love that you give. But I'm grateful for your mercy. And I'm grateful for your grace, and because of all you poured out yourself, I have come to sing this song out in praise. Emela, Emela, O Kaka. Alone, yeah, 
afternoon good evening depending on where you're watching us from you know i'm excited i'm glad to be with you this morning the lord has granted us you know such an awesome opportunity to be able to be alive to be able to be strong to be able to be healthy that i can see you you can see me it's a great privilege so thank you for making the commitment to be with us this morning i just want to specially thank my facebook family and you know the instagram family those people who are live with us this morning thank you so much for the sacrifices you have to put in to be with us we really do not take it for granted of course we are live 
on Facebook and on Instagram at the moment, of course. If you have been with us, you know what I will do every morning. So please, 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 I beg of you, just go ahead and share the video. Be a blessing to somebody. These are the best gifts you could give somebody because you might never know what they need at a particular time of their life. So share the video. Do not withhold it from somebody. Just put it on your page, on your status. Invite a friend, a sister to be part of us, and you will not know how much blessing you'll be to that person by just giving them the word of life, which is the word of God. And so for those of us you who are on the WhatsApp group, you know best. In fact, this should no longer be a repetition. The link has been shared already on the WhatsApp group. All you need to do is to minimize your page. Go to that link, click, it will take you to Facebook. If you are not on Facebook and you want to share it, you know, on Instagram, the name we use on Instagram is Marian Ayuk1. I could spell that M A R I A N A Y U K number one. So Marian Ayuk1 in letter, not in words. So that's the, 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 the name we use on Instagram, please go there, follow us, um, spread the, the news, the word of God to other people so that they can be blessed as well. And while you're doing that, just a reminder for that person who is actually watching us for the very first time, you're very much welcome to the Transforming Woman Fellowship. And in short, we call it TTW. The scripture we have for this morning, the second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, which says, But we all, we unveil faces, beholding, as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what is this fellowship all about? It is an interdominational gathering of women, regardless of their age or status, for fellowship to behold the face of our Master, Jesus Christ. And because of that, they evaluate themselves daily, not for condemnation, but for spiritual good. It is a place where women are trained to thrive, understand time, season, and stand the gap in the place in the place of prayer for themselves, their family, or the nation. We use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman, depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help. We gather for now every Monday to worship, share the word of God, and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender and a place where you have only one objective and no alternative, which is either Jesus or Jesus. Our mission is to gather to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good. Our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for God. They are conscious of their life in the secret. They are ready to fulfill purpose enjoy marriage and promote godly parenting. Our values are love, humility, compassion, excellence, self-control, and sacrifice. That said, you're very much welcome again. Please just stay with us for the next hour or so. And I believe you are going to be blessed. One of the things I've realized is I think our messages are very, okay. I have a reminder right here. <laughs> so what you have on the screen for those people who are watching us on Facebook, um, if you have been part of us for a while, this is for those strictly for the people who are online followers. If you have been part of us and maybe there's a message that has blessed your life, something in your life has been changing as a result of that which the Lord has been teaching you upon this altar, this fellowship, you want to you want to share it with us. Do you have a prayer request? That's thing that starts like a body. Now you're looking for godly sisters to you know stand with you in the place of prayer. Please you could reach out to us through our email, the transforming woman2020 at gmail.com, or you could text us through the messenger available on um, the social Facebook social media handle and of course if you're watching us from Instagram you know best how to how to get to us praise the Lord hallelujah one of the things I've realized about this fellowship and that's maybe it's one of the things I'm also believing God to do the more for me I know he's he has been doing it somehow but that's the grace I'm believing God to get me to fully where you know sometimes you know that some people who preach here eh, their preachings, their messages are very, very hot. And I don't know about, I mean, you may have a different um, perspective concerning the way I preach or maybe Mr. Grant, whoever is privileged to be on this altar or this fellowship to bring forth the word of prayer to us. But now I don't look at it from the, I don't look at it from the, um, was that what the fire rise point of view i look at it one of the things i i keep believing god one of the graces i believe god is to bring the word in such a way that is so simple you know sometimes there are some people who preach very very simple but 
mostly impactful in such a way that I would like the word of God to be practical, that every time people have an encounter with the word of God, especially in this fellowship, they could, regardless of who they are, they can really understand it. Because it's one thing to preach, it's another thing for people to be able to understand it. You know, in such it comes in such a way that it's as if it meets everybody's points of understanding. And that's one thing I'm believing God to do for us. I'm also anticipating and looking forward, knowing that the word of God today might be that simple. It, it might be, it may not be too much of something like that, but that as simple as it is, it's just going to bless somebody. And it may be the key to one particular thing that somebody has been waiting all their life. And so let's just pray. Father, I want to thank you. And I want to give you all the praise and all the glory for this another awesome time, you know, in God's presence. We thank you for your word that is about to come forth. We thank you for life. We thank you for revelation that you're about to reveal to us. You know, my life changed on this year drastically when I heard a particular word and this has been a word I've heard over and over and there is somebody that will be listening to me this morning they have heard this word maybe over and over but there will be something about the word of today that is going to turn their lives drastically for good and they are not going to turn back again I thank you for that which you are set to do because every time people have an encounter with you there is always a shift I pray that mentally emotionally you know on all areas of our lives we are going to experience that shift from the revelation of your word this morning as we talk about the topic of rest i pray that we will not just say it but we shall experience it it shall be evidential in our life and our testimony shall be that everyone will be able to see i give you praise and i give you glory i yield myself before you that you will use me mightily this morning i'm nothing more than a servant that people will not see me that every word that will come out from my mouth this morning will be that which will project you and you alone and at the end of the day please Always remember to gather all the remnants of glory that has been in our midst. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. And so this is the last month in the year um, 2023. You know, God has been faithful the last month. And we are talking about rest. That's our theme for this year, rest. For this, sorry, for this month, it's going to be rest. And... Let's just go ahead and see what the Lord has for us. I want to be talking on the topic of title, Rest from Battles. Rest from Battles. Now, though I have that topic, but my objective this morning is to be able to... Oh, my God. My, I'm sorry for... Even though when I put my phone on um, airplane mode, somehow, messages still coming. So, praise the Lord. So, my objective this morning is to be able to, you know, bring the topic of rest to us in such a way that Almost everybody, not everybody, it might be impossible for everybody. If it's possible, if God wants to do it that way, that's fine. But most people, you'll be able to have an understanding of what rest is. When you have the revelation and you have the understanding, when God is able to reveal to you what it means to enjoy rest or to get to the place of rest, then maybe what we'll talk about next week now will be you'll be able to, you know, walk in that dimension freely. So I just have the objective to make that word simple and understanding for each and every one of us so that's what we're going to be looking at today though you see the topic rest from battles but the main objective for you to really understand what rest is all about and what god is expecting us to do yeah. but now what is the oh my god what's the definition of rest what's the definition of rest now i'm going to give you a general definition of rest and I'll explain something. If you go to the dictionary, you go to Google, you want to Google what is rest, it will tell you cease work or movement in order to relax oneself or recover strength. And when you check some of the synonyms of rest, it tells you it means to relax, to slow down, to pause, to do nothing, to take time off. There are a lot of synonyms, but I just picked out these few ones that we all know. Of course, when we talk about rest, normally each and every one of us, you know, think about, okay, you know, you need to take some time off. You know, we keep saying it all the time. Oh, you you, you have overworked yourself. You have overstressed yourself. You need to take some time off and relax, you know, take some time off and, and just take care of yourself, right? So it's, 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 it's very important. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Now, we live in a, in a dispensation where... Um, what word can I use? Will I use inventors? Will I use producers? Though God has given these people wisdom, but there are some people working tirelessly to make sure that um, the people in this generation 
are actually having more time for themselves. If you want to look at it for, you know, the past generation or even in the days of our fathers, life was, will I put it easier when it comes to activity as it is now? So um, technology has been advancing rapidly in such a way that, you know, people, it's as if people should not just do anything any longer and then they have the results. So you have all of those things, the microwave, even with cars inventors, as they keep inventing cars, before we didn't have um, the automatic. Now you don't need to do gear one, gear two. I didn't, I didn't do that back home. But people told me, oh, if you would have tried driving with, you know, half clutch and all the rest, they said, it's so difficult. I mean, I wasn't privileged to even have one until I came here. But then you see that, the invention, innovation, and all these things that we keep seeing, you know, technologically as days goes by, as we keep improving in this century, is that everything is tilted towards making life a little bit easier for man. You know, these inventors actually have one thing in their mind, is that they want to give man more time. That's that's kind of the objective. If you look at it, they want to give man more time. They want to make sure that you know microwave. Before I remember, even when you're back home, sometimes you feel like eating one food. But when you think of going behind the house, you know, put those firewood together, you just say, you know what, I'll just manage it like that. You know, we are we're specialists in eating. This is for people who grew up in houses that you know have, um, you know the microwave so you're specialist in eating good and cold food and we we enjoyed it you you know we enjoyed it but now as things are advancing a time comes as if you don't have the microwave you don't need to be rich to have it, it, it it's almost like a necessity those things we used to see like luxury like fridge for example you, you know it's now becoming a necessity even in the third world country so you kind of see i'm just trying to give us the illustration and examples that things are advancing you know, technologically in such a way that everything, they want life to be so easy. In fact, Amazon, we know, and all these online platforms, everybody's working hard to make sure that if you order something today, you should have it more week. In fact, it encourages the fact that no need for you to wait. Things are supposed to be done at your bed and call. If it's possible, the only one they have not got now is how you can just sit. You feel like eating and the food automatically say hey, rice and beans. The rice and beans is so you can feel it going through your stomach where you don't have to pick up your hands. We don't know what you know the next 10 years hold for us, but everything is actually working in that very fast um, rapid um, um, speed to bring those things into existence. But one thing I've come to discover why I try to reflect on these things is that regardless of the, the fast innovation taking place, for example, we have what we call AI now, which is artificial intelligence. We can see that the existence of artificial intelligence have taken out, you know, has reduced the workforce in most companies and a lot of people are crying, though it has an advantage, but they feel like, you know, the, all the, the people are going to suffer because if art, artificial intelligence, AI is going to do most of the work, definitely that they are not going to see any need why they should hire people. But when you look at all of these things critically, you discover that somehow, just because it is man-made, just because it is, um, it is the idea that God has given to man, it is done from the standpoint of the flesh and man, it will still need man. There is no way, regardless of how AI is going to, you know, dominate all over the world, you still need man to control that machine. You still need man to put things in place. So at one time or the other, they are going to be default. They're going to be need for them to fix something. So they will need man. Man cannot be eradicated completely out of the picture so no matter how these things have been innovated there will never be a time where we don't have a work to put in you have the microwave but you need someone who is going to take the food out of the fridge you know you have to do some little work put it in open the microwave take it out so you see that all of these things somehow there is some little kind of work you are going to um, um you are going to incorporate or you are going to put in even though we have all of this things. so these things are good now when we talk about rest in 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 a, in a layman perspective we also see that it is important because i saw um this um will i say a research online 
that says that this should be specifically for those people who are in the United States of America. And I could believe it's very, very true. This was as of 2018, 2019. You know, it says the research shows that as of 2018, 55% of all workers, all workers, you know, did not use their vacation. They did not use their vacation day, leaving a total of 768 million unused vacation days. You can imagine 768 million. So most jobs, corporates will tell you, okay, you have vacation, you could take so-so and so-so with this so-so and so period, but people like to be working. And so it says that 768 million you know, on use vacation days. And then the research also shows that even the people who decided to take their vacation, their time off, it says 79% of people worked on their vacation days. And when I read that, that particular article, I was just laughing because it's so true. I have, I know so many people, I don't know if I've done it before. I think when I just came to the United States, I did that, you know. We, especially those of us who are Africans, when you get to this place and, they tell you, okay, you have time off. This is what happens. Once you take the time off here, there are some jobs that will allow you to still work on your time off and then pay you. So they pay your time off and then they pay you for the days you work. Some other jobs will refuse. And then what we find ourselves doing is you have one week time off in this job. You will not take that time to rest. No. You say, what am I resting for? You go to the other job and you'll be pulling double, double, double. So you still use that time and you are working. So I was laughing because it's actually very, very true that 79% of people who actually take their vacation time still work during those vacation days. But um, God has designed our bodies in such a way that we need to rest. He has designed our bodies that we need to rest. And so if we fail to to take rest, it, it, it is very disadvantageous to us and it could resort to problems. But while we have looked at this rest, starting from talking about it from a general, natural perspective that we all know is just all about taking out some, taking off some time, you know, just trying to rejuvenate yourself so you re energize yourself so you can, you know, come back and do that which you have, you are called to do. That's not going to be our focus in you know, in this month of December. And that's not the type of rest I've brought to you this morning and I'm going to bring it to you in this month of December. The kind of rest I'm talking about is not the rest you get from um, physical exhaustion, where you get where you're tired mentally, you're tired from doing an activity. No, that's not the type of rest. I want to introduce to you the Jesus kind of rest. And that's what we're going to be focusing on this morning. Why it is important for you to take off your body, find out some time, and not just be a workaholic, you know, around the clock. It's also important that sometimes we take our time to rest. But we need to enter the Jesus kind of rest. And that is the kind of rest we need to talk about here. Now, we, when you go through the scripture, if you are a Bible student, you will see that the word rest is written so many times in the Bible. But the very first time we heard about that word rest right, was right from the very, very beginning. So from the book of Genesis, we see that even God, the Bible says on the seventh day he rested. So even God himself rested. And so that's the first time we saw that word. And I think it is very, very important because God actually had the reason why he instituted that and why he explained that to us. And so we'll just read um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Let's start from that point. Genesis 2, verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Let's see something. The Bible says, the Bible says, does the heaven and heavens and the earth did I just give you Genesis chapter 2, verse 1? Can you? Okay, never mind. Never mind. You can take it off. I think I have. Uh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to give you verse 1, 2, 3. So if you if you pull it, you can pull it off. I have my Bible here and I'll read it. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, 
which God had created and made. Praise the Lord. So thank you for that scripture. Now we see, this is the very first time we saw the word rest. And we see from this particular um, Bible verse or verses that God himself rested. But most often than not, you know, a lot of people actually refer to this particular, oh, God rests on the seventh day. So they kind of look at it just to be like, oh, he rested because he was tired after he has, you know, he has established the heavens and the earth. He, he has established creation. So he was tired. You know, permit me to remind you that the rest year was not jesus was not resting i'm uh, sorry not jesus i'm sorry god was not resting as a result of him being tired god is not tired and he cannot be tired we must start from that particular note so most often we look at it to tell you okay on sunday you don't need to walk don't do anything because on the seventh day so we calculated to be monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you know up to sunday so for us we think the sunday the seventh day was sunday and so jesus god did not work i don't know why i keep calling jesus god did not work on that day and so we ought to rest and not work on that day that is not actually what the scripture means God was not resting. He was wanting to institute something, a provision that has been made to us as children of God, which is divine rest. But he started by giving us that illustration of himself, that after he has walked for six days, establishing, declaring, and seeing those things, he stepped back and he looked at the things he has done. You know, And the Bible makes us understand he rested, not from the point of exhaustion, as I said earlier. He rested from you know, the completion. So the rest came as a result of the completion of that which had been done. I'll give you an example. You know, when you go to the court system, what happens is that when the lawyer, lawyer stand up to talk, you realize that after they make their case known to the judge, they always use the word, I rest my case. Now, when they use the word, I rest my case, that word they use is not used as a result of, okay, they're tired, maybe they've been standing to defend themselves. They use the word, I rest my case. In other words, you know, with regards to this particular case I brought to court or my client has brought before the judge, with regards to that particular case in front of the judge, I have said everything I know everything I could think about at this moment concerning that particular case. So I'm resting my case as a result of the fact that all evidences I have, everything pertaining to that particular case has been presented before the judge. So I have nothing else to offer again. I have nothing else to say. If I insist on saying something, I'll actually be saying something that is out of place. So that is actually the meaning of rest. If you look at it from, you know, that point of view is the same thing that um, God was establishing it. So his rest was not the physical kind of rest, but the rest was coming from the point that he has done everything. Everything was finished. Everything was set to just the way it was supposed to be. It has been done. And so he was resting from the what he has done, not from the fact that he was done. The Bible makes us understand in Psalms 121 verse 4, the Bible says, Behold, you know, the, the God, the one that keeps or watches over Israel. He said he never, he neither sleeps nor does he slumber. Have you ever thought about it? How can somebody be and the person is not sleeping? And then you say the person is not tired at the same time. So that's the God we serve. If you can put up for me Psalms 139, let's see what um, the psalm says. Psalms 139, verse 7 to 12. Let's look at it. God does not sleep, he does not slumber. Look at this was David. He said, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, he say you are there. If I make my bed in hell, can we see that God is in heaven? He's also in hell. He say if I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. He say if I take the wings of the money and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, he say even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. You can imagine, take up the scripture. You see, darkness and light, the psalmist is saying, where can I run? Anywhere I go to, if I go in the place where it is so dark, it says your light, you are still there. So you are even light in the darkness. If I go to hell, you're there. Why am I giving us this particular Psalms 139? It's just to establish the fact that the God we are serving is not a God that, you know, it's 
being tired of doing something. He's not tired. He's everywhere. And somebody who is everywhere at the same time, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, who will know that it's not a God that can say, okay, he was so tired. He said, okay, he should just sit down. He cannot be put on the same spot. We can't hold God. So just so we understand that that rest was not the point that, oh, he was really tired. He said he should just have some time or he was planning to sleep. Now, if he sleeps, then what will happen when we sleep? If God sleeps for a minute, it means we are all gone because you can imagine what the enemy is thinking or searching. So you can also confirm that by looking at Isaiah chapter 40. We see it from verse 25 to verse 29, if you can have it. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 25, a very common scripture. The Bible says, to whom will, will you compare me? Or who is equal to me? This was, this, was, this was God talking. Who is equal to me, says the Holy One. It says, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all things, who brings out the starry hosts one by one and call forth each of them by name. It said, because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, oh, the transforming women? Why do you say, oh, women in this fellowship, the way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. He said, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. This is the point of emphasis. He will not. That's very assured. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You can see that. The everlasting God, he cannot grow weary. He gives strength to the weary. In other words, which we are going to talk about that, but I don't think that's important for now. But just to put it out there, you see, he's the one who gives strength. He's the supplier of strength. So he can't run out of strength. If you are weary, he's the one who can jack you back. So he cannot be down. He cannot get to a state where he needs to sleep. The Bible says the everlasting God, he cannot be weary. And so I just want you to know that God was not resting because he was tired. No, he rested because he has finished everything. He has finished the work. We are looking at the topic rest from battles. And I'm telling us that I want to introduce to us the divine kind of rest, the Jesus' kind of rest, and the kind of rest that God actually wants us to experience. I want to, you to know that this rest we are talking about, it's both a place and a state of being. It's both a place and a state of being. And I will explain to us. Now, from the very beginning, I've started with us. We have seen the first place we saw rest, which was in Genesis, right? And we saw that God rested. Now, this verse, as I said, is, is also a place. When you see the life of um, Adam and Eve, the first man God created, we realize when you read the scripture, you understand that God actually had a place, more like a location of rest for, the, for, for man, for creation. Because they are the first samples, the first people God created. He had a place in mind for them. And we can see that when he created the Garden of Eden, that was a location, a physical place that God has intended for man to dwell. It was so much designed in such a way that they needed to have all the comfort. There wouldn't have been any worry. There wouldn't have been any stress, any battle, no fight. That was God's original, original intention for man. We all know that, right? So he created this garden, this Eden, which was a perfect place, a place where, in fact, I, we could just imagine how life would have been if everything stayed the way it was from the original point of view. And so we now see that when man was created, of course, they were put in the garden so that he could have rest. That was a location. I'm trying to establish that rest is a location and a state of being. So that was a location. So they found themselves in that location where God has established and intended for them to be. However, they could not stay in the location. They choose the place of unrest. They choose another point. They choose another location. And we know what happened. The Bible makers understand that the instruction was given to them that the tree in the middle of the garden, they should not eat of it. They should not eat of it. But they decided to eat of that 
that tree. And so from the day they ate of that tree, we all now, the first men started living in unrest. They started living on the rest. And that's how we all, the generation that was better, we had to start following that particular um, particular lineage. It's right, the generation of the old. But I'll bring to you that there had been a change and the provision is still made available. But for this purpose, let me continue. And then I also said to us that West is not just a location. West can also be um, a state of being. But before I go to a state of being, the second example about the location, when you read the story in the Bible also, the Bible says concerning the children of Israel, we know that while they were in Egypt, they were going through turmoils, you know, sufferings, um, and all this hardship. God heard their cry. He heard their, their, their suffering, and he sent Moses to deliver them. Now, before God could send Moses, God had a place of rest designed for the children of Israel. So there was a location of rest, and we know it was the promised land. So he had all of these things crafted out, already planned for them, even before he could send them a deliverer. He had this place, you know, I have prepared the place for you. I have prepared a place for you. And when you get to that place, you are going to experience rest. Where you are now is the place where there is a lot of battles. There's a lot of challenges. And guess what? I have something in stock for you. And the scripture makes us understand after he had already put and established that thing in his mind and everything, he now sent Moses that go, you know, and deliver my people out of the hand of Pharaoh. We know the story, of course, they were being delivered and now they had what they call the wilderness journey. And so why they were in the wilderness now? We see that the scripture makes us understand that they did not enter the rest. If I can have Psalms 95, verse 6 to 11, we'll see that they did not enter the rest. But that rest God was talking about, let's see, it says, this is Psalms 95, it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, and that's a word for somebody, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. So there's a comparison there. He's talking about this dispensation. He's talking to you and I. He says the word is coming forth again today like it was in the old. He says if you hear that word, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion, as in the days of what? Of trials in the wilderness. He said, when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. Take note of that word. For 40 years, I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my way. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Thank you. You see, I had to take you all through that journey, but the point of emphasis, you see, he ended, he said, I swore unto those people, those I delivered from Egypt, I had a location for them. I had a place designed for them. It was a place designed for them to rest. However, because of what they did while they were in the wilderness, because of the way they treated me, they saw my words, but they did not believe in my words. He said, I swore, this is God talking, I swore to myself, he said, they will not enter my rest. So that particular statement is talking about the physical location that God kept in stock for them. So that is why, as we go through our work with God, you always hear people saying, some people always tell you, oh, maybe when they are praying for you, they say, ah, sister, you know, I'm praying for you, that God will give you rest. Even us, sometimes, there's any pressures we go through in life, when we go before God, we don't know how, we just say, we say, Father, you say, you'll be telling God, Father, this load is too much for me. This body is too much on me. Please give me rest from so so and so. Give me rest from so so and so. What are you asking God? You are asking God to take you to that location because we all think and we have known that there's actually a time in your life. You know, most often when you come to that place where you think like, okay, you know, everything has been done. You know what I've desired. God has done it for me. You now know, you consider that, oh, you know, I'm now resting because you have actually got into that place where you have everything you desire and everything you wanted God to do for you, he has done for you. And so when people are still believing God to do something for them, you hear them keep saying that, Father, please take me to the place of rest. They're talking about the location. 
And I also said to us, now away from the location, hope we are understanding what the location is and what God was promising to the children of Israel. It was a promised land. But before I go to the state, I want you to know that each one of us, even up till today, God still has a location for us. Now, this location is not like a physical place like that. So, so, so people feel like, okay, maybe when they had a visa to come to go to Europe, um, 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 Canada, Australia, you know, or in the United States of America, maybe some people may think that, oh, that is your location of rest. But now in this dispensation, it's not just the, the promised land we present that place of, you know, satisfaction. It's not just about a particular um, location, but it's a it's it's a spiritual. Would I put a spiritual location where you get to a place where you know that you have been you are experiencing rest from all the battles that have been around you. That's the kind of um, physical location we are talking about. But more to the physical location, the promised land for you and I, it's God's intention for us is also what the state your state of being your state of being. I started by telling us the story of. Adam and Eve, the first man. And I said to us, there was a particular location, which was a place. We see that, um, we see that in that Genesis, I'll, I'll read it so you see it. I, don't, I didn't give you because it's not important for you to project it. But let me just say something in that Genesis chapter three, I don't need to read it. In that Genesis chapter three, where we see Adam and Eve, I said to us that when God intended for them a particular location and he put them there god told them when you eat of that tree that is in the middle of the garden he said if you eat of it the day you eat of that tree he said you will die he said you will surely die right and the scripture makes us understand they finally ate of it the end of the, the the fruit of that tree and immediately the end of it i want to establish to you that rest is not just a physical place but more to eat is also a state of being when god told them do not eat immediately the end of it they did not die they didn't die they lived again they had children and all the rest they continued life so they did not die physically so what god was telling them was not a physical kind of death in other words because god has established them made them wired them put them in a location of rest he now gave them a warning guess what you are in a location of rest you have the provisions the principles it's there it's made available in the kingdom however if you are disobedient and you do this particular thing what will happen is that you are not going you're going to get to this state of death not dying physically but what will happen is that i am going to withdraw my rest from you so from the day they decided to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil they had on rest if you read the scripture you discover immediately the end of it confusion came into place they became confused a lot of things started happening war we came into place they were scared they were hiding so a lot of things got into place immediately what happened immediately they disobeyed what happened what was introduced now was their state of being you could see them their shape did not change their physical um, 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 makeup did not change i'm not talking about now the one we put on but the way they were created everything about them literally remained the same but something changed in the inside something moved in the inside their their soul their spirit their state of being changed the way they used to think before that type of peace they had the peace was taken away from them and it is very dangerous the peace they had before was no longer there unrest set into into the situation and so it is very important for us to note that your state of being it's very 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 imperative when we're talking about divine kind of rest but the physical location which is that place where god has answered you granted your heart desire it's important however if you do not understand and master rest from the point of having that state of being that god requires for each and every one of us you cannot really enjoy that physical place we're talking about that place of satisfaction that place of all round blessing where you know that ah the lord has indeed done me well and you mean it from your heart you're not just faking it you must have been able to have the revelation and master the state of being which power it's more superior 
to that location, that place of rest. So it is very important for us to, to take note of that. Rest in this content is not the absence of you know, your circumstances, but it is the presence of peace. Even though the circumstances may be there, even though the pain may be there, even though the challenges may be there, when you get to that place where your spirit, your soul is experiencing rest, regardless of what is happening in or and around you. I titled the topic Rest from Battles because one of the things I've discovered, even why when I was believing God, when we before we got into December, God, what would be our theme for December? He said to me, it's going to be rest. Now, if you look at it, the last messages we have had, even when we talked about Thanksgiving and before Thanksgiving, we have somehow the Lord will always bring in this topic of wanting to encourage us because this is the time I've told us that the enemy is so happy. The devil, they will be so happy because I know by now he has so many customers, so many customers, so many customers he has recruited, so many because not because anything is wrong with them it's just because their state of mind they have drifted they are experiencing unrest they don't have peace and so when the enemy is able to identify that he takes advantage of that season of their life and when the enemy takes his, he takes advantage of that season of their life he's able to lure them now to what he wants to project and most often than not once you are experiencing unrest you begin to buy those things and that's why i know that the lord is really you know bringing these words to us to encourage us to make sure that even though the enemy is having some customers will not be found you know in the enemy in the enemy's book to be one of those people he has been able to capture our mind and that state of being we talked about rest in battles have you not discovered it that we all at one point or the other, we have some battles we are we are dealing with. There are some people, maybe in their lives, you know, growing up as children, maybe from even to enter primary school was a battle for them. Secondary school, some of them they got to GC, they had to write over and over something that maybe some other people would just do it once. They have to do it again and again and again. They got to university, maybe somehow their document they could not just see that they just keep fighting battles all true they will eventually maybe get some things but they have to fight and fight and fight and fight now those people are the people who really ex um, experience the extremes you know away from the people who experience extreme battles somehow we have people who are battling with you know battles to get married battles to have children battles to 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 train that child battles in finances battles in marriages they're having these turbulences in their homes you know misunderstanding with their mom misunderstanding so they have you have a lot of battles that people are going through but one of the things i want to bring to you this morning and that the lord has reminded me is that let me tell you something all battles or most battles are distraction most of the battles we are experiencing a distraction and you just give me time for me to explain as we go further so you understand and don't just get offended by the word most battles are dis um, distraction and that is why he is bringing rest to you because when you can understand what rest is and you have a revelation of the purposes of those battles and the fact that they are mere distraction you know from your main purpose then you are going to experience the rest that god is, is instituted to you now if you live all your life trying to fight battles it is very very disadvantageous and it will definitely not lead you to a perfect or unexpected end you might go far a little bit but you will definitely not get to that point where you want to go to you know the devil is fighting all of us so hard and you discover that especially those of us who are africans that because we mostly respond based on the pressures we go to respond based on our pressures and so you see somehow if you look at your prayer life maybe it has a year is coming to an end somehow fire 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 i bind i lose i bind i lose so every time you go before god even if you try to say our oh, father thank you thank you hey i bind everyone that's holding me any wish that is holding me any power that will not allow me so you see that because of your state of mind because of what you is happening in your soul in your spirit man you will now react you know be it um spontaneously that's what i use 
when you go to the place of prayer, when you go to God, you will ask uh, spontaneously from what is happening in your spirit man. And so you find that the totality of your prayer life is more about binding and losing. You want to kill all the witches. It's not a bad thing. But then I want you to understand that battles, most battles are distraction. And if you can understand the revelation of divine rest, now even when you have battles, you start treating it differently. I have never known as of now, as of now i am walking in the covenant of rest so i know what i'm talking about i've been in in, in 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 with god you know for a little while now working with him intensively like trying to be close to him and just trying to anchor with him however i did not know that i was not experiencing divine rest until this year so there is a difference i don't know if the lord will be able to help me to explain it so i don't know but i know god will be you know, explain to you. There's a difference. It's not just the ability to be in church. It's not just the ability to maybe fellowship with God. There is something that is called the covenant of rest. There's something that is called divine rest. And when you get to that place, battles of life become a distraction to you. You will not bind too much. You will not lose too much. There is, I, I really, I don't know if it's hard for me to explain, but there is just that thing. When you get to that place of rest, it becomes different. The way you are going to react will be different. The way you are going to be praying will be different and so we can spend you can spend your whole life 30 years 40 years 45 years 22 years if you look at it intensively though you pray though you go to church the totality of everything you do is centered around what is happening in your spirit man and sometimes you don't even know you are battling with unrest you don't even know you have not gotten to the place of rest and so now instead of thinking okay what can i do Okay, God, what, what do you want me to do? What is my assignment? What is my purpose? What do I focus on? All you are thinking of is this pressure? Is this auntie in the village? Is this uncle? Uh, the way that in 1964, the way when I entered the house, the way that my 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 my, my father's sister, that I I suspect that I am from that day that I looked at me. Ah, uh, my life has not been good. Am I saying those things will happen? They do happen. Am I saying that it is wrong to, to bind and lose? No. But if most of your time and most of your prayer time, most of your thoughts, every time you think goes to warfare, then the enemy is robbing you of something. You are being robbed and you are living in a state of unrest. Maybe you don't just know it. And so you are just acting, as I said, spontaneously to what is happening in your inside. But you have not just had the revelation of that. You are just, you know, focusing entirely on the wrong thing on the wrong thing so this one is called the covenant of rest and if there's anybody among us that god will give the revelation of what i'm teaching you see some people who finish this year they will be walking in that covenant and you will see how everything is going to turn around when you walk into the covenant of rest when you walk into the covenant of covenant of rest and so we must understand as i said that um Let's put me Hebrews chapter 4 first. Let me see what that scripture is. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. I want to establish something. That um, Hebrews 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. I don't know if I have any. Hebrews chapter 4. I didn't give you that scripture. Or did you go to use the restroom? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4. It's my IT specialist there. We are doing number two. Hebrews chapter four, verse nine to to ten. So let's see that scripture it says. So there remains a full and complete Sabbath rest for the people of God. Verse ten. For the one who has once entered his rest has also rested from the weariness and pain of his human labors just as god rested from those labors uniquely his own now don't take it off so i can explain something this scripture is loaded maybe we'll talk about this hebrew chapter 4 because it talks about rest maybe next week but then i want to establish something i was telling us about pressures in life and battles that we all faced 
Now, I gave us an example of Adam and Eve. I gave us an example of the Israelites. These are all people. I said to us at the very beginning, God has an intention for all of us. He wants to take us to the place of rest. He wants us to have that state of peace and that state of rest. He has made provisions already for it. And we see that Adam, the first man, failed us. Okay, God continued with the Israelites, thinking that, okay, the Israelites is going, they are going to help us. They still failed us. They did not walk in that covenant of rest. And so now he came now. Jesus had to come in. Jesus is the only one who actually entered God's rest. Jesus Christ. And we see that the Bible says, I'll read it again. So, so there we meant a full and complete Sabbath rest. It's not talking about Sunday rest. Rest is that covenant of rest for the people of God. Please permit me to remind you that this rest we are talking about is not made. There's no provision for this rest when you are outside of God. You have to be in him. You have to be a child of God and a believer to be able to enjoy the kind of rest I'm talking about. Verse 10 says, for the one who has once entered his rest has also rested from the weariness and pain of his human labors. Just as God rested from those labors uniquely on his own. You see, weariness and pain, you can take it off. We all are in that stage where sometimes we experience weariness. We experience the pain of this life. But now, this is the scripture revealing to us what we ought to do in that state. You can still enjoy rest even when weariness is around the corner, when there is pain. It says that because there is someone who actually used to be in human form. So he has experienced the pressures of this world. He has experienced the troubles and the battles of this world. However, even in the midst of the troubles, he was able to enter into God's kind of rest. And so what happens to us as children of God is that we begin to walk in that which has been made already. We begin to, you know, we, will be, we begin to align ourselves to that which Christ has already made provisions for us. So the covenant of rest has been made already. You don't have to work for it. In No, let me not use the word. You don't have to work for it because I'll actually teach us next week how you can enter into that rest. So you don't have to, what I'm trying to say, you don't have to do too much to enter into that rest. There's a provision in the kingdom for rest for every child of God. All you need to do is to have the revelation and understand what needs to be done to enjoy that rest. Jesus Christ already walked the work. He already paid the sacrifice. He's the only one who finished his work entirely. Everything that was said concerning him by the time he was coming on time, and he finished everything and he entered into God's rest. So now it has been made, he has given us that access. What Adam did not do has been cancelled and neutralized. So now we now have rest, the provision, the principles have not been taken away. It is, it is still in existence in the kingdom. So when you have the revelation and understand what Jesus Christ has already paid for you, all you need to do now is to flow in that dimension, is to walk into that state and that covenant that has been made already for you. And so just like what I was saying, that as you experience the battles of life or the challenges or whatever thing, maybe health challenges, so many things, doctors report and all the rest, right? You, you experience that particular challenges. We must come to understand. The Bible makes me to understand in the book of Genesis chapter 16, verse um, 33, you can put it up. And I'll just be saying it. He has assured us that in this world you're living, he said there will be many, many tribulations. You know, I've come to understand is that most times when we go through seasons of life, it's just that we don't pay attention to what God has said and the provisions he has made already for us. And so that is why we can't help it but to be in a state of unrest. Look at what the scripture says. It says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace what, in me. I am trying to let you know that I want you to have rest. And that is why I'm telling you, this is, this is the Lord speaking. I want you to have rest in me. And this is why I'm explaining to you what I'm explaining. He says, I'm giving you this word so you can have rest. If not of the purpose of rest and peace, I will tell you this. He says, here on earth, he says, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because what I have overcome the world. You will have many tribulations. He says, but then I have a solution for you. Even before the issue is going to come, even before the challenge is going to come, there is a provision of how you are going to overcome it. 
And so he's telling you, before he told you about the issues, he now told you, he said, I'm telling you this thing so that you will have peace. This peace I'm talking about, that is why we're not talking about the physical rest. This one, if you sleep and you wake up, it's not going to solve the situation. If you like, sleep for one week. If you like, go go, go to Miami, go, if, go to the beach, take pictures. This kind of one I'm talking about, this kind of rest, I'm, give, I'm introducing you the kind of rest that is given to believers. The provision that has been made. So you can do the vacations, which are very good as much as you want but if you do not have a revelation of the understanding of the kind of rest the enemy is going to rob you big time big time he says that in this morning eh, it's not a strange thing if you go through trials i know that sometimes the people around us don't help the matters because they try to make you think that is too much on you they try to make you think oh maybe god is unfair to you and that is why you can't help it, but you are sinking and sinking as the days are going by. As you look at the date and 2023 is running down, you can't help it but to be in a state of unrest. Why? Because even the people around you are not helping you. And it's simply because they are short-sighted of that which have been made already, the provisions in the kingdom and the revelation in the scripture. And the Bible says what it says that you have, I am telling you this beforehand, is because I want you to get to a state of being, a state of mind. That thing has to do with your spirit. It's not. It doesn't have anything to do with the way you look and um, 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 what you wear. No, no, no. It has to do with what the internal battles of life. And those are the battles that actually kill and kill real good. You see somebody, ah, they, ah, we didn't hear they were sick. What happened? They had battles of mind. They were precious, they were going through. It's not actually the, the, just the circumstance, but how the enemy was able to manipulate their inside and bring them to that place of unrest. One of the things you must fight as a child of God is so, so hard, is that the enemy does not take you to that place where your state of being is being altered. Because provision has been made, if you can anchor and hide yourself in that covenant of rest, I'm telling you, there's nothing that will come your way that you'll not be able to overcome it. And the Bible says, it says, guess what? I have a, I have a, I have a state. There is a place I want you to be. It's that place of peace. It's not the type of peace that man will give you. It's not that type of peace that when you eat your favorite food like me, sometimes, you know, you just be like, <sighs> no, that's not the type of peace. He said, but let me tell you, because it will be hard for you to get this peace because I know that there is a lot of tribulation. I know that this world has a lot of up and down, so many battles. So God is already aware of it. So he had to warn you before time. He said, but he said, he said, he said, he said, be of what? Be of what? Good shape. That's why next week I'll be teaching you because they said there's something you need to do. Be of good shape means there is a responsibility you two have to put in place. That's it. For you to enjoy that covenant of rest. And he's telling you, if you can just be of good shape, say, I have overcome. It means I have, the victory is already made available. But why is it that we are not working in that victory? It's simply because we don't have the revelation. And that's why we are living in unrest. We don't have the revelation. And that's why we are living in unrest. So Christ has already made everything possible for us. If you look at it, um, if you look at it in Mark chapter 4, a very common scripture we all know. All of us preach, preach, and preach, and preach. And let me, I want to, I want to say something before we read that particular. Um, Mark chapter 4. You know, there's a difference. There's one thing to be in the midst of a battle, and there is another thing for the battle to be in the midst of you. Because if we don't get this thing right, people who have well meaning intentions, they are going to lure us into a place of instability, into a place of heavy burden, heavy burden in our spirit and our mind. There is one thing to be in the midst of challenges or battles, and there's another thing for those battles to be in the midst of you. And of course, you are, you hear people giving examples of sheep. Um, if if you know what the sheep is, you know as big as the sheep is. Why the sheep is in water? Of course, there are waves. So many waves. When the sheep will actually get to that place, its final destination, there will be so many waves. But now, when you are seated in the sheep, you don't actually feel that wave. Why? It's not because there are no waves. It's just because what you are sitting on the comfort of something that is able to bear the waves for you. Are we seeing? Now, there's a difference. When you are inside of that ship, now the water starts get, getting into the ship. 
Once the water start getting into the ship, it becomes a total thing or um, um, differently. It becomes a something entirely different. There's a difference when, let's say, the parts of the, 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 the ship start falling off and now you can literally feel that that wind trying to take you out of the ship or you experience yourself. So those are two different scenarios. All of you are in the ship, in the water, but there's someone who is seated in the ship. There is wave, turbulence is all around the ship, but they don't experience it. And another one who actually is on the ship, and then maybe the water comes in, or they have to throw your goods overboard. Those are two different things. And we could see when Jesus gave us this illustration, which I want us to read quickly, you will see that he was talking about a different kind of rest that every believer must be able to understand and have the revelation of it. You see, in Mark chapter 35, a common scripture, but let's see what the Lord wants to teach us. He said, in the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along. Of course, you see the capital H, which is talking about Jesus, along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat. Now, in this particular situation, it was so bad. It was so bad because this one, the Bible says they the they wind. The Bible says, let me open my Bible. I want to. The Bible says that, one minute, let me open my Bible. The Bible says the wind, that's in Mark chapter 4. Okay. So the Bible says, um, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into. So it wasn't outside, it was into the boat. So that could be a very scary situation. I think that maybe if all of us were there, we would have been shouting for our life too. You know, the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. So it means water was entering the boat. Their life was at stake at this moment. But he was in the stain and sleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, you do not care that we are perishing. That's what that's right. You do not care that we are perishing. Verse 39, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm but he said to them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said to one another who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him thank you for the scripture now it's a very common scripture but let me say something with this with this um, particular case study we see jesus was illustrating to us what has been made available to each and every one of us each and every one of us as children of god why right? this is him in a boat of course the disciples were there turbulences of life came in it, as i said this one was so bad you know sometimes you may go through there's any pressures you go through in your life you are able to manage the year and there but at the same time you come into your life pressures come so hard on you you feel like it's just the end you feel like this one eh you you are almost giving up you feel like you're almost dying this one will take your life you you feel you cannot withstand it any longer that was the situation they found themselves because if i was the one to in the middle of the sea the sea itself is so frightful then now the water is entering inside the boat that's a very frightful decision i mean a very frightful situation and so sometimes there are situations in your life that it looks so frightful it looks now if you look at it, if you go to google they say um, the diagnosis of so so and so 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 you know google is not helping us just go there and type that sickness my god if you see the way they will project it you if you just read it you're already dead that people are just seeing your body bear. so long as as far as you're concerned you are dead because when you read the 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 the, the, the side effects when you read so so and so this you read people those people who have experienced that type of thing you just know ah, this one my own is gone so that was the state they found themselves now when jesus we all know he was sleeping in the midst of that storm. But the amazing thing about it, why he was teaching us, you see, the Bible says that then when he arose, the first thing he did, he just spoke to the wind. And he said to the sea, this is it, peace be still. So what he had is what he gave. The disciples could not give what they don't have. They did not have the God's kind of peace. They walked with him, but they did not experience the peace he had. So they were all in the same, thinking, okay, okay, yeah, we are yeah, we're believing, we're we following a leader, a great leader. But there was something he carried inside of him that they did not carry inside. They all had their physical makeup, the hands, the feet, the eyes, and they had the mouth. 
they had even the word, but they did not have that that state of rest. They were not yet walking in the covenant of rest, and so they did not have a sufficient peace enough to be able to keep them being still while they were in the storm. And so the Bible says, because Jesus Christ understood what it means to enter into God's kind of rest, and that was what helped him. Because even before he could fulfill his assignment, he had a lot of things and pressures around him, but he was still able to overcome them because he knew that a word has gone and said, there will be many tribulations. He said, be what? He said, be still, because I have overcome. And so when he got up, he, he addressed that particular situation based on the peace. He did not get up and say, in the name of Jesus, I, I, um, and you, whoever, every, um, was these fishes and, and this fish in the sea, he start calling them, I know you are the one, I attack you. No, 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 he didn't do that. Because there was something that was sponsoring his audacity. There was something that was sponsoring the, 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 the peace he had inside of him. And so because he had God's kind of peace, he spoke and he said, peace, be still. What I have is what I'm giving you. What I have is what I'm establishing. And immediately now, the winds could, the winds and the waves could obey, not because he was Jesus. No, they could obey because he was speaking from the place of the covenant. He was speaking from the place of revelation. He was speaking from that place, you know, and most often, you know, even the situations know when you have gotten to that place. And they have no choice than to obey. He was speaking from the place of covenant and this very common scripture we all know in the book of matthew chapter 28 when the um, um matthew chapter 28 i mean sorry matthew chapter 12 verse 28 the bible says now there's something about this very common scripture we all say it every day let me read it quickly it said but i matthew 12 is it matthew 12 28 mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, Matthew 11, 28. It said, come to me, all you will labor and heavy laden. A common scripture, but I want to show you something, and I will give you rest. That's a promise. But look at the verse he's talking about. It said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your soul. So when you are burdened and overloading, Aladdin, right? When you have that weight and battles of life, he's not trying to say that, oh, you know, you will not come true for you, but the type of rest he promised you is the rest that comes from your soul. But most often, when we approach God, it's like, God, you know what? It's just like me carrying, let's say, a basket or something on my head, and you just want somebody to take away what that, that basket from your head. And so when we go to him, we all desire that father, you know, that thing, it's heavy on me. I can't stand it any longer. I'm ashamed. I can't even stand in front of my, my friends. Look at what you have done and all the rest. Now his interest is to take away that thing from you. But this is what he's saying. He said, I will give you rest. But he said, if I can, if you can understand the rest that has been made available by covenant, the provision by the principles that has been established in the kingdom, it says this other one, which is the physical one, with no time, I'm going to take it away from you. Because it says that I will give you rest for your soul. Not rest literally from that particular challenge you are going through at the moment. It says if you can understand the rest of the soul, then you understand the place of rest. There is a location for rest for every child of God, which is the promised land. Our own various promised land. But if you can understand the rest from the place of your spirit man, that the challenges are there, the tribulations are there. However, there is something that I have connected myself to. There is that promise, there is that faith and that belief I have in the master. And I think I, I there is that faith and belief I have, you know, that state of being. Where you put your faith in Jesus and rest on him regardless of the circumstances. Next week, by the mercy of God, we'll be looking at how do we get into that rest? Because somebody will be like, I really want to get into that rest. But how can I get into that rest? Just know that that rest is made available for every child of God. And if you can have an understanding and a revelation, then you'll be able to get into that rest. Of course, I want us to pray one prayer today. As we ended with that scripture in that um, Matthew eleven twenty eight, is calling you that we need to come. Those people, 
Exactly, sister. Those people who, you know, all of us who are laboring, you know, I've come to discover that physical labor profits you very little. I'm telling you. Now, there are so many things. If all we have in this life, we have to labor for it, something is wrong. And I don't think that's God's own plan for our life. We don't have to labor at every given thing. Why not just, you know, hacker and rest on him? Don't allow the enemy to cheat you. He's distracting you. I'm telling you, he's, that's what Jesus did. This, this thing he got to see, this is a distraction. We have somewhere we are going to. And you are now, look at how the disciples, they, they did not pay attention to what was doing. They were just distracted. That challenge is a distraction. If you understand the covenant of rest, it's a distraction to you. You are going to face your phone and do that which you're doing. Do you know how many, many, how many number of people as of this time now, they have lost it already. They are, they are gone. Mentally, they are finished. In their spirit, you know, they can't even pray again. They are gone. They are weak. And the Bible says, I want to give you a rest. And it's called the peace that can only be established by him. Nobody, pastor, leader, nobody can give you this kind of rest we're talking about. And so one prayer point I want us to pray, as we do the other prayer points, is you're going to be asking God, even before we talk about how do we enter that rest, what do you do? What is your own responsibility to get into that place where you start enjoying the covenant of rest? You're going to be asking God, Father, I come to you. Because it says you should come to me. Say, I will. It's a promise. I will. If only you can rely on me if only you can depend on me if only you can trust me and so you're going to be asking god father take me to that place take me to that place i am ready to 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 give my yoke to you i'm ready to lay down that thing before you don't come with him with that mentality do it i want i want i don't want to see this issue tomorrow i want to be married tomorrow mm -mm. that's not the type of thing we're talking about and so you just go before the lord i don't know what you heard i don't know what we have said and our time is over father I have come before you. Why preparing before next week? Help me. Take me to that state where I'll be ready to learn and to know how I can enter that rest. Take me to that place of fellowship where I could believe in you and trust you. Take me to that state of rest. Regardless of what I'm experiencing now, regardless of the, the, the circumstances around me, you're going to be asking God to take you. He said, for more. He said, learn from me. Go before God and say, Father, I'm ready to learn from you. Father, I want to thank you for your word. We thank you for the season of rest. We thank you for that which you have taught us. Thank you for the place of rest you have made available for us. And thank you for the state of being and our state of mind you have also made available for us. You have called us to come to you. Each and every one of us, we are heavy laden. Our burdens are too much. The pressures of life are too much. We thank you for your word that is comforting. It has already told us beforehand that we are going to see plenty of it. In fact, if we are experiencing now and it's not plenty, means we have not even gotten to that place. Because you promised us, you said, but what has happened? He said, I give you peace. He said, we should have peace. Father, it is hard to have that peace without you. It is hard to experience that covenant of rest. We need your help. We have come to you under this fellowship this morning, that even in this month of rest, we are going to get to that place where we experience your rest evidentially, not just by saying it verbally, where we can get to that state that regardless of the waves and the winds and the things around our lives, we can say of a truth that we have peace and the peace comes from God. I pray that you will continually reveal yourself to us. You continually teach us. You continually give us that rest we need in our spirit and our soul so that we can, you know, attain higher heights. We will achieve very little in life if the totality of our life is centered around fighting battles. And because your word already said there will be battles, why should we now focus on fighting the battles and battles and battles when that is not our assignment to do? I pray that you will help us. That we will not focus on the minor. We will not measure on the minor. But we will measure on the measure according to that which has been made provision for us in Jesus. Much less name we have prayed. Amen. Please do not forget to share the video. Be a blessing to somebody. Hallelujah. If possible, Auntie Kelly, merge food of the week. A very short prayer. Um, it's going to, I'm just going to be standing the gap and all these prayers are going to be merged into one. I'm praying over every person we're praying over our nation, praying over every woman who is looking on to God to have a child and every young woman who is looking forward to God for their own spouse. And 
for every marriage that may be going through any form of turmoil. Heavenly Father, that you, I stand here today as a point of contact for uh, our nation, Amen. for every woman who is looking unto you for a child, for every girl who is hoping unto you to find their own spouse, and for every marriage, O oh Father, that may be going through any kind of turmoil. We just want to thank you. We we'll thank you. We stand from a we come from a standpoint of thanksgiving to you this morning, because even though the wars may exist, Lord, you give us peace. We have rest. We have hope of tomorrow. We are not worried. We want to thank you that even though we may not be married yet, we still have a life to live. Every day is seemingly interesting. We're having new revelations. Life continually goes on, and we are. We have joy within. Lord, we want to thank you that even though we may not have the child yet, we have a husband who is ever faithful, a husband who makes us feel whole, a man who is so supportive. And we just want to thank you for every good thing that we have right now. And we thank you for the promise that you have given us that we will enter your eternal rest. The promise that you have overcome the world for us. The fact that we know that you are there with us in the middle of the sea while we are making our bed, that you are there with us. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, because we, we, we remain assured that as long as we are with you, we are going to be fine. It is not on the situation that we are that we are going to focus on, but we choose to focus on you because you are our God. And so we say thank you for being our God. Thank you for your promises over our lives. Thank you for the things that you're doing in our bags that we do not even understand. Thank you for not letting us even stress over the situation. Thank you for just giving us that peace that we can just live and enjoy the moment because you are taking the battle. You are taking the ways. You, you, you are the shield all around us. You build a wall of fire all around us so that we can be well incubated while you fight that battle that yeah. you just want to say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank mm -hmm. you for your mighty right hand over our lives. Thank mm -hmm. you for the transformation that is happening in our marriages that we may not see it, but because you're working new things in our hearts, you're transforming us every single day. We are becoming better in our marriages. Thank you for not giving up on us. Amen. Thank you for looking forward to our situation and solving it even before we even realize it to be a problem. Thank you, Lord, for you alone are God all by yourself. Amen. I want to take one minute to pray for our sister who is sick, that the Spirit of God that has revealed it to us would do that which he has set to do during this moment. Amen. And so again, we are standing on the ground of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for that revelation, because with that revelation come redeeming. Thank yes. you, oh, Father, for the healing power that you are pouring upon her. Thank yes. you, Father, because your name alone will be glorified through her life. Thank you for what you're about to teach her through this illness in her life, oh, Father, because yes. we are rest assured that you, have overcome that illness. Amen. And so we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we believe that you are doing great and marvelous things right now. And so we just want to praise your holy name. Blessed be your holy name, O oh Father. Amen. We are overjoyed, O oh Father, for what you are doing. We are not seeing it. We do not know how. And we will not even try to tell you how to do it. Because we know that your ways are not our ways. What we might even think we want to do, well, that might be the right thing. You have better and greater plans. And so we just say, do it the way you know best. All we're going to say is thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Quickly, I'm going to read our Psalm 20. May the Lord answer us when we are in distress. And may the name of the God of Jacob protect us. Amen. Amen. May he send us help from the new sanctuary and grant us support from Zion. Amen. 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 May he remember all our sacrifices and accept our burnt offerings. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. May he give us the desires of our hearts and make all our plans succeed. Amen. Amen. We will shout for joy when we are victorious and we will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all our requests. Amen. Amen. Now we know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers us from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Amen. 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 We trust in chariots and some in horses. May we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we, the transforming woman, stand firm. Amen. Amen. Lord, save the transforming woman. Answer us when you call. Amen. Amen. Father, we want to thank you. We give you praise for today. We give you glory for that which you have spoken to our hearts this morning. Indeed, there's no time that your word comfort that is wasted. It might not be for everybody, but we know that at every given time you have a particular person in mind therefore we want to give you praise on behalf of those people that the word of god was meant for them today we thank you for transformation we thank you for help our work with you is never an easy ride day by day you take us by the hand and you teach us how you want us to work with you we pray that even in this month of rest then um, um, tied to the, the month of rest i pray for as many of us that it pleases and that we are willing you are going to take us into the conference of rest not just by saying it but that even heaven will recognize that something about us has changed because we had a revelation in your word concerning that which you want us to do per time per season as a fellowship we give you praise we give you glory on behalf of every woman who is part of this fellowship in the whatsapp group and on um on any of the social media platforms. We pray and we declare over these people that their lives are being preserved from the plans of the enemy. We decree and we declare that the plans of the enemy over your life be aborted. I decree and I declare that concerning us, we will not cry or mourn over any one of us. Neither are we going to mourn over any of your close members, family members, be it your spouse, your children, your immediate parents and siblings. I decree divine preservation over your life. We stand from that which have been completed on the course and we decree that there, will be, there shall be an exemption concerning us and our household. And Lord, till we meet again next week, Monday, none of us shall be missing both in health none of us will be missing in life in the name of jesus christ i decree a completion of your body parts your systems we pray for wholeness that it shall be wholeness in your mind in your spirit in your body and everything that god has given to you we decree a completion nothing in your system will be missing in the name of jesus christ father and we call this week blessed that our going out is blessed and our coming in is blessed wherever the soul of our feet will touch there shall we possess dominion men will not gather to mourn with us thank you our father for your faithfulness thank you for all you have done and thank you for loving us the way you do we cannot treat you for gold neither shall we do that for silver let your name continually be glorified projected and praised in our midst forever in jesus name we have prayed amen and amen thank you so much facebook family thank you so much instagram family i love you very very much and i'll see you again next week Monday, the Lord bless you, cause his face to shine upon you. Bye for now.